All right, hey guys, a by Bryant here, and I am here today with a special review that I promised a long time ago that I am finally getting around to, and that's a review on Select Division players and discs. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are probably wondering what in the world is a Select Division player or a disc, but um, I'm sure many of you have gone into Goodwills or other thrift stores or flea markets, and you've probably seen these around and not known what the heck it is that you're looking at. Is it some type of an old uh, record album or, you know, they just seem to be some weird, obscure format that you see a lot in Goodwills that nobody buys because nobody has a functioning player or they're very rare to come by. They're a technology that originally came around in the late 70s and early 80s and they were kind of a precursor to um, laser discs. So today I'm going to be taking a look at some of the history behind one of the players that I have, a little more information on some of these discs and how they work, and show you guys the picture quality and what the advantages were for these players back in the time. So let's take a look at the player and some of the discs, and we'll see some of the features of these interesting pieces of outdated technology. All right, so now let's take a look at this RCA Select Division video disc player that I have. This model here was released in 1982, but the technology for the discs had actually been around since the early 60s and is called a capacitance electronic disc system, as you can see here on the top of the case. Now, what that basically means is that the discs work similarly to a vinyl record. They're made out of a nickel metal material and they have grooves and there's a special stylus that actually plays the video recorded on the same bumps that you would find on an actual record while it spins inside of the player. So let's take a look at the uh, controls and some of the features of the player itself. As you can see here, we have the RCA Select Division Video Disc Player logo. This little slot here along the bottom is the tray where you would load in the disc. You have an indicator on the top here for side one and side two. The play time of the movie that you're watching. The rapid access buttons, reverse and forward, so that way you can digitally fast forward, which was amazing technology for the time. The visual search, which allowed you to move to different chapters along the media. The pause button. And then this is your off, play, and load, unload button. And now what this does is you would actually put this to the load and unload position. And that tray opens up for you to insert the disc. Move it up. And that would act as the power on, play, button and then all the way up turns it off. Now let's take a look around the rest of the machine. As you can see it has a really nice wood grain texture all around as so many machines did of the time. And in the back let's get a look at some of the ways that it actually hooks up. You have your antenna in pass through if you wanted this permanently hooked up to your television so you could watch your TV shows, or if you had a beta player or something hooked up to it, you could pass it through. And then this is your video out signal. Now I'm using one of these adapters that goes to an RGB to coax uh, adapter, so that way I can hook it up and play it through my uh, composite cables on my television. And you have your channel 3 and 4 selector, as well as the power supply in the back. And now there's a little button around the back here, which I can press in. And that will allow this cover to pop off. And you can get a better idea of how the inner workings of this player actually works. Here is the stylus that actually reads the disc. And it goes from the outside to the inside. And the disc will actually rotate. And the uh, needle will read the magnetic grooves and that's how it transmits the picture to your television. Now unlike a laser disc player unfortunately you do have to flip this over 
from side one to side two, but the technology is really amazing for the fact that it is using a uh, needle to actually read the grooves in these discs. So it's a really interesting fusion of technology for the time. Once I actually load a disc and start playing it, I'll show you guys more how that works then. Now let's move on to some of the discs. All right, so here's a better look at just some of the favorite highlights that I happen to have in my collection. And these are really neat. I like these because they look like a vinyl record. They have really good cover art and uh, they just look really cool. So that's a, a big plus in collecting these discs. I uh, have The Hobbit, Walt Disney's Tron, Jaws 3, Westworld, The Neverending Story, and Raiders of the Lost Ark. These are just a few of my favorites. I will flip these over to get a better look at the reverse sides of them as well. And you can see all of the descriptions and other various art on the backs of the Selectivision discs. So they're really cool. They have a lot of great artwork and uh, they're just really neat collectibles. Even if you don't have a player, I just really like the look of them. They display very nicely, but unfortunately some of the papers started to wear over the years. So now let's take a look more individually at what makes up one of the Selectivision discs and how they work. Now one other thing that I did want to take note of before we actually take a look at one of the discs themselves is the Selectivision name is only an RCA branded thing. You'll see many different names on the different discs because they were made by different companies like RCA, MGM, and Warner Home Video. So. Some of them were called video discs. Some of them still just have the capacitance electronic disc system logo on it and nothing else. And then RCA had Selectivision. And then Paramount, they came out a little bit later and that's when they had stereo video discs, which were the last line of the capacitance electronic discs to come out. And it was a pretty big feature because these didn't have the greatest sound when they originally came out. So now let's take a look at one of the individual discs. So here I have the Never Ending Story video disc. Let's take a look at a little bit closer as to how this thing actually works. One thing that you'll notice whenever you see them in a store is they seem inaccessible. There's this locking bar on the top. And I'm sure a lot of you have wondered, well, how the heck do these things play? There's no way to get the media that's inside of the cover out in order to play it. It seems like it would be almost impossible to play. On the other side, too, most of them had a little grip, although this one doesn't, to where you could grip with your thumb and your finger in order to pull them in and out. Now how these actually work is there's a catch on the top here, which I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's a little white catch on either side. And you would put this into the player, which when I go to uh, play it, I'll show you that in just a moment. And the uh, there's two little points in the back of the player that grab and push in on either of those points, and then you pull the entire cover out. So right now, I'll give you guys a better look at what the actual disc looks like when you do that. Now, I've already gone ahead and depressed the tabs in, so I'm going to very carefully slide the disc out and show you guys what that looks like. So if you were to have this already open, this is what you would see inside. And this is the actual disc that is played inside the system. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see, I'm not sure if you will or not, if I can catch it with the correct light. You should be able to see the grooves. There we are. And they're very, very small grooves. Now, if you could feel this, you could actually feel that they're raised. Um, they're protected, again, like I said, with that nickel metal alloy that's uh, covering the disc, so that way the magnetic stylus can read it. So you don't really have to worry about them scratching.
but this is an actual complete separate disk that um, is totally independent of the case, which just kind of holds it in there. And this is almost like a laser disc or a vinyl vinyl record. So if you've ever wondered what is in one of these things, this is it. And it's a really, really interesting technology because this came out almost, well, more mainstream, almost five to ten years before laser discs would ever become popularized. So the fact that you had access to any type of digital media at all at that time is pretty amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and put this disc back together. We'll power on the Selectivision player. And then you guys can see it in action. Now I've got the TV all set up. We've got the cables all hooked up. And we're ready to play our never-ending story, Selectivision Disc. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take and move this switch down to the load-unload position. And that will open the tray and power on the player. As you can see with the blinking L here, that means that it's ready to accept the disc. So we'll go ahead and we will insert side one, as it says up here, and side two is the opposite side into the player. And we just line that up and gently push it all the way back. You'll hear a click. And then we pull the disc back out. And as you can see, the disc is no longer inside the sleeve. It is now in the player. So now let's go ahead and we will flip this up to play. And we will start the movie. Usually takes it a second or two to warm up. There we go. And now let's see how the picture quality is looking. Now one thing that you might notice is that the picture quality is a little grainy and the color is kind of inconsistent. That's a big problem with these discs. Unfortunately, they don't age and hold up well over the years. And the stylus also tends to degrade, so the picture quality tends to suffer with these older players. But it's amazing that you can see one that actually plays to begin with. The sound quality isn't bad at all, and it's pretty clear. Overall, the picture and sound quality is pretty good for such an old medium of playing back movies. So now let's take a look at how this is actually working in the innards of the player. So now let's remove this little cover one more time, and you'll actually be able to see what's going on inside the machine while the movie's playing. So as you can see here, the disc is spinning rapidly around just like a vinyl record. And this right here is the stylus. This is moving back and forth from the outside edge to the center. And that's what's transmitting the video signal off of the nickel coated disc to the player and then to your television set. Really amazing technology when you think about it for the early 80s and mid 80s and the fact that this was originally conceived but could only play back short 10 minutes of video back in 1964. Overall I'd say this technology is really impressive. Now let's see some more of what this player can do. So another really interesting feature of these players which was what made them so desirable at the time is the fact that you can digitally move forward to other chapters without having to fast forward a big long VHS tape that would take forever. You just hold down this button here where it says rapid access and it'll just move to whatever chapter that you want. And then immediately your video begins playing without delay and without having to fumble through fast forwarding and rewinding through a beta tape or a VHS cassette. Now another feature that's also really interesting with this type of medium is that it has a digital fast forward and rewind function that's similar to the chapter select, but this allows you to individually select a point in the movie without going through any uh, static or lines on your TV. So as you'll see here, I'm going to hit the fast forward button, and you'll see how quickly and digitally that this is able to fast forward through the movie at lightning speed. Look at that. That is laser disc quality technology. 
for this very kind of bizarre, uh, almost record player-like type disc. And it's able to do everything you could do on a DVD almost 20 years before its time. So that's really neat. And one of the final interesting features that the Selectivision players are able to do is that you're able to pause the digital media without any blurry lines blocking the screen. Now unfortunately, you don't get to see the picture as it doesn't hold it in place, but it is kind of a more convenient way to pause a movie, as you'll see here. I'll go ahead and hit the pause button, and you'll see it goes from a live picture here to a black screen when you hit the button, and now I'll hit the button again, and there's no delay from where you paused to picking up your movie. Which that was a pretty interesting little piece of technology at the time for uh, beta players and VHS players. There'd always be a delay when you'd be pausing and replaying your video. Now let's move on to one more aspect of the player. Now unfortunately a big inconvenience with the uh, Selectivision discs is that once your movie was halfway done, you'd have to flip it down to the stop load unload position place the sleeve back into the player. And this is where it got a little confusing, because if you didn't remember which side of the sleeve you had flipped over, you could play the wrong part of the movie. Flip the disc over, pull it back out, and then play the remainder of your video. So that could be a little bit annoying when you're sitting down with family and friends trying to watch a movie and have to get up suddenly and have to do all this unnecessary work in order to watch your movie. Well guys, that just about does it for my review of the Capacitance, Electronic Discs, and RCA Selectivision player systems. I hope you can kind of have a better understanding after watching this of what these discs are next time you run into them into a thrift store and how they work and just what a weird part of uh, multimedia and family home entertainment history that they were. They really were advanced for their time. It was like having a laser disc player or a DVD 10, 15, almost 20 years before CDs and DVDs would become mainstream and really take over. Unfortunately, just like Beta, which that'll be a topic for another video, VHS was undisputed king of the 1980s. It was a little bit grainier, but it was cheaper and easier to use, and the world just wasn't ready for technology like this. At the time, a player would have cost you anywhere between $800 to over $1,000, and in 1980s money, that's almost two grand for one of these players, and the discs themselves usually ran between $50 to $75 a piece, as to where you could just rent a movie from Blockbuster or Suncoast Video for only a few dollars, or you could buy one and keep it for maybe 10 or 15 dollars. Much, much more convenient. And plus, you could record your own movies on, you know, a home camcorder and play them back. So, VHS was just the reason why everybody used that overall, you know, aside from any other form of media. It was just more accessible and a lot cheaper. So, unfortunately, this was kind of doomed to failure for the start. It had a nice little run of about five to ten years, but by 1986 or 1987, this was all but a dead format that nobody even thought about or used anymore. So again, guys, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these Selectivision RCA player and the capacitance discs with me today. They're really an interesting part of uh, multimedia history, and I hope you guys learned something today. So I'll see you back next time with another interesting video. Until then, take care. Hey guys, if you liked the video that you just watched, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And you can follow me at Facebook at King of Retro or Twitter at hashtag 8 Brian. See you next time.